How are you today? How was the weekend the program? I pray those testimonies you had last night will be transferred into every life in Jesus' name. Were you there? If I told you to give me the testimony, you can. Remember that uh, man who had been uh, impotent or paralytic or whatever on crutches for 11 years. How many of you remember that? And then when they invited him, he said, oh, Where am I going? I've been here, I've been there, I've been there. It's going to be different. Yeah. Like the retreat of this December, different in Jesus' name. Yeah. You will be there. You know, some people that used to sneak out to the village, whenever we're having a retreat this time, you will be at the retreat. Yeah. And at the headquarters, where direct unction, anointing will flow out, it will get to you first before it gets to other people. Yeah. You will get it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Postpone your traveling, postpone all other activities this December. Is the conclusion of what we said early this year that this year will be the best year you have ever lived. And so come for that conclusion. You know the theme of the retreat? Jesus, the final solution. I can see the solution in your life. Somebody say, Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for your children. Thank you for their faithfulness. They went through all last night's program this morning, and they are here again. Strengthen your children, your ministers, in Jesus' name. And I pray that the power to be effective witnesses for you, you'll grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. As the church is praying for me and you are answering, I'm praying for them and you will answer in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God has blessed you already. You can sit down. We're well, looking at Matthew chapter 28 and I'm reading from verse 18 all through to verse 20. Matthew chapter 28, reading from verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. In verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you. How often? Always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. As we look at these verses, which are very familiar to us, yet we need to understand a commission is given, a commandment is given out, and there is only one word that befits our responsibility in that commission. It is obedience. We have heard, we have learned, we have read it ourselves, and yet, how many of us are actually, constantly obeying the words we have heard? That's why we're looking at this passage, and today and we we'll make the title Diligent Obedience to Christ's Unchanging Commandments. Diligent Obedience to Christ's Unchangeable Commandments. As we look at these verses, it gives us commandments. It gives us a responsibility and a duty to carry out. And if we're going to be real children of God, which we are, and real ministers of God, which we are, we need to obey the commission, obey the commandment, obey what he has said. And we need to obey diligently, heart, heartfully, heartily. And we need to obey honestly, and we need to obey steadfastly, diligent, obedience, to Christ's unchangeable commandments. We know it's unchanging, unchangeable, because it says, I am with you, while we are carrying out the commandment, until the end of the world. Peter is no more here. I mean, Peter the apostle, and John the apostle no more here, and all those apostles no more here, and yet he said, I'm going to be with you. He's talking about being with the whole church until the end of the world. He expects us as the church. 
He expects us as the people of God to carry on the commandments of God until the end of the world. And here we are today. We are the people upon whom the ends of the world are come. And the Lord is commanding us. He's saying, Go ye therefore and teach all nations and baptize them after they are taught, after they have believed, they have repented and believed. You baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Then after the water baptism, we keep on teaching them all things whatsoever. Christ has commanded us and he has told us, he will be with us, he will be with you. In his power, he will be with you. With anointing, it will be with you. And with the confirmation of the word, it will be with every one of us in Jesus' name. Until the end of the world. Until the end of your life, Jesus will not leave you alone. You see, there are some people who have enjoyed great presence of Christ and of the Holy Ghost and of God in the early part of their Christian life. And then as they're growing older and older and older, they're wondering what the final day for them will be. And they're wondering what the old age time for them will be. Will they be abandoned? Will they be forgotten? You'll never be forgotten. You'll never be abandoned. Until the very last minute of your life here on earth, the Lord will be with you. Again, the topic today is diligent obedience to Christ's unchangeable commandments. Obedience. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 5. Obedience is very important. He himself obeyed and has passed it unto us that we too will be obedient unto him. In Hebrews chapter 5, reading from verse 8 and from verse 9. He tells us in verse 8 about himself and being made perfect. He says he became the author of eternal salvation to all them that obey him. That's verse 9. Look at Jesus now in verse 8. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. He learned obedience. Was obedient to the Father. And he says, if you are now my disciple, you must be obedient to you. will be obedient to the great commandments and to the great commissions in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at. Number one, our transformation and obedience to all his commandments. First of all, our transformation. Before we can be obedient to the word of Christ, his grace must touch us. His sacrifice must work in us. And we must be turned around after repentance. There's a renewal, a regeneration, a reformation, a transformation in our lives. And so we're able to obey him. Point number one, our transformation and obedience to all his commandments. Look at that Matthew again, chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28 he has commanded us. Of course, he has the right. He's the captain of our salvation. He has the right. He's the captain of the army of the Lord. And we are part of the army of the Lord. We are soldiers of Christ. And he has the right to give us the commandment. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, I'm reading from verse, uh, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He said, because all power has been given unto me in heaven and in earth, go ye therefore. Because I'm backing you up, go ye therefore. Because when I said, I also equip, go ye therefore. Because I'm going to give you the power of the Holy Ghost to go along with you, go ye therefore. Because all power belongs to me, and whatever power may try to contradict you, or oppose you, anywhere you go, I'm by your side. I'm going to crush every opposing power. It's going to destroy every opposing power. And because he has that power, and it is all power, it's total power, it's complete power, it's perfect power, it's a kind of power that cannot fail. It says, go ye therefore and teach. Go ye therefore and teach. That means to teach the word of God that will bring sinners to salvation. 
You teach the word of God that will bring conviction unto the sinners. You teach the word of God that will get them on their knees and make them to cry unto the Lord, what shall we do to be saved? And you give them the answer and then they call upon the Lord, they will be saved. And as they are saved, you will baptize them. That's the commandment. You will baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That's the commandment. But we, before we can do that, there must be transformation as we come to the obedience of the Word of God. And look at um, Romans chapter 8. The transformation that takes place in our hearts when we are called. And when we come to him, and then with that transformation, we can now go forth and be obedient to the word of the Lord. Romans chapter 8 verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit that describes the life of the believer, the life of the convert, the life of the Christian, the life of any of the apostles. It says there is no condemnation because he has forgiven us, because he has set us free. There is no condemnation now to them that are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Why? Because a transformation has taken place. Anyone that comes to Christ must experience a transformation. Must, must have a conversion. Look at verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. That is to come to Christ. Number one, there is a transformation. If you have not been saved, you cannot tell other people to get saved. If you are still living under condemnation, you cannot tell other people how to be free from condemnation. If you do not have the assurance of the Spirit of God in you, that you are saved. You are a child of God. You are born again. And life has become different for you. All things have passed away. All things have become new. How can you open your mouth and tell other people to come and have what you have not got? Have you, they say, have you tasted of that grace? You say no. Have you received of that change? You say no. Have you got of that salvation of the Lord? You say no. Are you introducing it to me then? If you do not know how to get that salvation, how can you tell me how to have the salvation? When we have that salvation, there's the witness of the Spirit in our hearts. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. When you are born again, the Lord takes over your life. Instead of the devil tempting you and directing you and controlling you and dominating you, leading you here and there into darkness, leading you into defilement, and leading you into spiritual death, and leading you into the ways of society, the Holy Ghost takes over your life. And as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are now the sons of God. Look at verse 15, for we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. The fear of the future is gone. The fear of death is gone. The fear of where will I spend eternity is gone. We have not received by the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of God that cries within us, Abba, Father. And he and the Spirit itself beareth witness with our hearts that we are the children of God. He gives us assurance. You have repented. You have come to the Lord. And assurance comes to your heart. I am a child of God. Not only that, the Holy Ghost is now helping us. Lifting us up. Empowering us. Strengthening us. And interceding for us. Look at verse 28. Verse 26. Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for. As we ought... But the Spirit itself bears, uh, maketh intercession for us. It says, uh, with groanings which cannot be uttered. It's praying for us. That's why we're strengthening. That's why we, after that transformation, we have the courage and we have the strength and the backbone to go to other people and say, Come to know the Lord. Not only that, look at verse 34. We see that condemned 
It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is, uh, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. And that's all we have going for us. The Holy Spirit is on our side. Christ is on our side. The Heavenly Father is on our side. And the blood of Jesus has washed us and we're clean. And because of that transformation, now we have uh, the responsibility to be obedient to the Lord and go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In fact, we're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 30. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30. It says in verse 30, But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. He gives us wisdom. Some people say, but when I get to the people, what am I going to say? Christ lives in you. And he is the wisdom of God. The Holy Spirit abides in you. And he also grants us the wisdom. Even the heavenly father said, come out from among them and I will be your God. And ye shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. And I will dwell with you. The father abides with us. The son abides with us. And the Holy Ghost abides with us. We have wisdom. I have wisdom. I know what to say. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. It will fill your mouth as you talk to those sinners in Jesus' name. It says, Who of him ye are in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. And the transformation has taken place already. Because of that transformation that has taken place, now we are obedient to the Lord. You will be obedient to the Lord. I will be obedient to the law. Romans chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 16. Romans chapter 6, verse 16. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, a servant sir, to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, God forbid in Jesus' name, or of obedience unto righteousness, that's where we are now. We are being changed. We are being transformed. And our lives are you no know, more lives of disobedience and lives of rebellion and lives of rejection and lives of going against the will of God. We are now called to obedience unto righteousness. Look at verse 17. But God be thanked that ye were servants, past tense, past tense, ye were servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which, it, which was delivered unto you, being then made free from sin. I am free. I said I am free. It's made us free from sin. Ye became the servants of righteousness. Look at verse 22. But now be made free from sin and become the servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end, tell me, everlasting life. I will not miss it. You will not miss it in Jesus' name. After we are called to be with the Lord, that now we are children of God, we need to be obedient to the Lord. That is the evidence that the grace of God has come to us. It's the evidence that our faith is real, our faith is genuine, and that our faith is working. Transformation and reformation and obedience in our lives. But the obedience we are talking about is not, you know, partial obedience. You know, some people say, I'm obeying the Lord, I don't steal anymore. I'm obeying the Lord, I don't fight anymore. I'm obeying the Lord, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do this or that anymore. 
praise the Lord for that kind of testimony. But obedience ought to also include the great commission, the great commandment that the Lord has given unto us. He said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. He also tells us, Go ye and they preach unto every, the gospel to every creature. He that believeth shall be saved and is baptized. He that believeth not shall be damned. How about the people that say they are obeying the Lord, but it's only one-sided obedience. It's only one area of obedience and they abandon all the other areas of the commandment of God. Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15. And let us see what partial obedience amounts to. Partial obedience amounts to. You know what he has told us? He said, we should go and teach the sinners. Let them get converted. Let them go get born again. Let them become righteous. And when they become righteous, you will not leave them there and throw them, into the, throw them back to the sea of sinfulness. You will bring them to the congregation of the saints to worship with the, with the people of God in spirit and in truth. We must obey everything he has commanded us. Look at 1 Samuel chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 19. 1 Samuel Chapter 15, verse 19. Wherefore then didst thou not obey? Why, wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but did fly upon the spoil, and did evil in the sight of the Lord? As Samuel was talking to Saul, he said, why have you not obeyed? Of course, he said, I have obeyed. I went out and I did uh, more than 50% of what the Lord told me. Only this have I not obeyed. Look at verse 20. And Saul so said unto Samuel, Ye, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me. And then he goes on to say, And I have uh, brought uh, the uh, Agag, the king of the Amalekites, and I have uh, utterly destroyed the Amalekites. You obeyed partially. But in the sight of God, that was disobedience. The people who are saying, I'm a child of God, they even say, you know, I'm a worker in the church, and in that area of work, I'm, I'm faithful. Praise the Lord for that faithfulness. And praise the Lord for the good you are doing in the church. I about go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. How about that one? If you are not obeying that one, you'll just end up being like Saul. You've done part of what the Lord has commanded, and you're not doing the other part. Look at verse 21. But the people took of the spoil of the sheep and oxen, and then it says, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed. He knew the mind of God. He knew the will of God. He knew the commandment of God which should have been utterly destroyed. But you know, he had excuse. The people that have excuses for the disobedience. They have excuses for their rebellion. They have excuses for rejecting the totality of the word of God. He says uh, uh, they brought all those things back to sacrifice Unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. Look at verse 22. And Samuel said, As the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and in sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than, tell me, than sacrifice and to hack in better than the fat of rams for rebellion. Look at that. Partial obedience is continuous rebellion. I've obeyed this, I've obeyed this, but this other part, the people told me that let's do this way, let's do that way, and those things were brought back. And now the Lord is counting that partial obedience as rebellion. He says, for rebellion is at the scene of witchcraft and the stubbornness as iniquity and uh, idolatry. Look at this now, because... That was rejected the word of the Lord. 
he has also rejected thee from being a king. I pray God will not reject you. But you know, when people practice disobedience, disobedience, disobedience over and over, at the, at the beginning, the Spirit of God will be talking to you and be saying, you're a child of God, you can't do that. You're a minister of God, you can't do that. You're an apostle, you can't do that. And you're a minister, you're a preacher, you can't do that. If you continue, the spirit will still speak, but maybe in a lower voice, and then you continue in a lower voice until your conscience is hardened. And now you have rejected him, and he has rejected you. You will not reject him. We're well, looking okay, at First Peter. I'm reading from chapter four. First Peter, chapter four. We're well, reading from verse seventeen. First Peter, chapter four. We're reading from verse 17. Here it tells us about the result and the consequence and the recompense of disobedience. If you say that you believe in the Lord, I have obedience to the word of God. If you believe you have learned the word of God and you know the word of God, I have obedience to the word of God in small things and in big things. Within the church and outside the church, in your family and in the office, in the marketplace and in the office, that you know here is the word of God and you carry that out without allowing anything to turn you into disobedience. First Peter chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 17. For the time has come that judgment must begin. Underline the word must. It's not that maybe there will be judgment, maybe there will not be judgment. Maybe those of us who are born again, whatever we do now does not matter. We are saved and forever saved. We might have actions of uh, disobedience, actions of sinfulness, actions of uh, backsliding. It doesn't matter once saved, always saved. Not really. Once a child of God, always a child of God, not really. Once a minister, always a minister, not really. Once a preacher, always a preacher, not really. Once in the narrow way, always in the narrow way, not really. It says, for the time has come, is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at, tell me the next word. Tell me, tell me. At us, at us, at us who say we're born again. If it begins at us who say we're sanctified. If it begins at us who proclaim that we're the children of God, that we have known the Lord, we've confessed our sins, we've forsaken our sins, we've believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, and we've turned back into our vomit. It says the judgment of God will begin at us, and the word of God cannot be broken. The opinions of men will be forgotten. The false doctrine of preachers will be forgotten. But the word of God will not be forgotten. It says it will begin at us. If it first begin at us, what shall the end of them be that will be not the gospel of God? What shall be the end? of the people that are nominal churchgoers, nominal churchcomers, nominal Christians, nominal workers, nominal ministers, nominal preachers. They hear the word of God, they read the word of God, they preach the word of God, but they cannot obey that word of God themselves. And the habit of disobedience has uh, taken hold of them and every time they disobey. What shall the end of them be that obey not the gospel of God and is the righteous can't live the saved where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear where shall the uh, ungodly and the backslider appear we will not be disobedient unto any commandment of God okay I will not be disobedient to any commandment of God because that is the crown and that is the evidence that we're a real child of God. We're coming to Acts of the Apostles. Acts of the Apostles, I'm reading from chapter 26. Acts chapter 26 and we're reading from verse 19. Acts chapter 26 verse 19. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, 
Paul the apostle could testify. He said, I saw the Lord. I heard the Lord. I had the commandment of the Lord. He gave me what to do. He gave me the assignment. And he gave me the duty. He gave me the responsibility. And from the moment I heard from him, and he said, and an eyes to touch me, and my eyes were opened, and the power of the Holy Ghost came upon me. Right there in Damascus, I began preaching the word of God. Not only preaching the word of God, also lived by the word of God. Look at that chapter 26, verse 19, whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but showed forth unto them of Damascus. That's where I was going uh, when the Lord met me on the way. And then I got there and I came and said, Brother Saul, the Lord that appeared unto you in the way has sent me that your eyes will be opened and you'll be filled with the Holy Ghost. He said, Right there at Damascus and at Jerusalem and throw out all the coasts of Judea and then uh, to the Gentiles that they should uh, repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. I pray that that same attitude of obedience, habit of obedience, spirit of obedience, the Lord will grant to you and I in Jesus' name. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 8. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. I'm being affectionately desirous of you. We were willing to have imparted unto you not the gospel of God only, but also our own souls because you are dear unto us. On the one hand, we imparted unto you the gospel. Not only that, after you received the gospel, accepted the gospel, and you were born again and you were transformed, we were willing to have imparted ourselves unto you. Our time was spent for you. Our money was spent for you. Our skill was spent for you. Everything with God was spent for you so that you will have this gospel established in you. Look at verse 9. For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail for laboring night and day because we will not be chargeable unto any of you we preached unto you the gospel of God. They didn't charge them. There wasn't anything that they told those tenants to pay. And they said, yes, we know the gospel is free. But our coming here is not free. The gospel is free, but we have to eat. And food is not free. We know the gospel is free, but you know, we have to get this and get this. And they siphon money from them and steal money and extort money from them. They didn't do that at all. They did what they did sacrificially. Look at uh, verse 10. In verse 10, uh, he says, uh, Ye are witnesses, and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. Their lives were holy and righteous, and their service was also sacrificial. Point number one then. Uh, the transformation, our transformation and obedience to all his commandments. Point number two now. His teaching to be observed by all true Christians. His teaching to be observed by all true Christians. If he has saved us, he has also commissioned us. He has also commanded us. And he has also told us what to do, how to be obedient to his word. We are coming to Matthew chapter 28. And I'm reading from verse 19 to the first part of verse 20. It says, Go ye therefore. What's the therefore for? It says, Go ye therefore. All power is given unto me. Go ye therefore. You cannot fail because I'm by your side. Go ye therefore. No power can overcome you because all power resides in my hand. Go ye therefore. Satan cannot have any power against you and succeed because all power is in my hand. Go ye therefore. 
all those sinners, all those evil people cannot have any power that, that can overcome you and destroy your life. No matter what power of darkness they have, because all power is given unto me, both in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore, Lord, we will go. Because of your power, we will go. Because of the anointing, we will go. Because of the power that you're giving us, granting us, we will go in Jesus' name. It says, go ye therefore, and it says, into all nations, all nations, baptizing them, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, that the divine trinity right there. There are three personalities of persons in the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Don't let any, let any writer confuse you. Don't let any theologian confuse you. Don't let any false prophet confuse you, saying it is Jesus only, Jesus only. Jesus is the Father, Jesus is the Son, Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Is that true? I said, is that true? Jesus is not the Father. Because we know when he was baptized in water, as he was coming out of the water, that's Jesus, the Holy Ghost came upon him like a dove. That's a different personality. And then the Father spoke from heaven, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The Son on earth coming out of the water of baptism and the Holy Ghost came from heaven and lighted upon him and then the Father spoke with a very clear distinct voice this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased now as we go to preach unto sinners and they repent and they turn to the Lord and they believe in the Lord then they are baptized in water it's one immersion in water to show the unity of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And after that water baptism, they don't run away saying, Now I'm born again, and now I'm baptized in water. I'm going back to the syncretic church. I'm going back to my darkness. I'm going back to the worshiping assembly of the past. I'm going back to the Pharisees. I'm going back to the Sadducees. No, they now stay so that we can teach them. To observe all things whatsoever he has commanded us. Look at Acts chapter 2. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. That's how it was done at that time. They preached to them. After preaching to them, they were baptized after their repentance. And after that uh, baptism, they continued steadfastly in the Apostles' doctrine. Look at uh, verse, uh, verse 14. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Look at verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about how many people? 3,000 souls. He told them, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Rescue yourself from this perishing generation. Come out from this defiled and defiling generation. And he came out. And he did that joyfully. They were happy. They were happy to repent. They were happy to come out of darkness and to come to the light. And then it says in verse 42, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. They didn't say, we have our own church, we have our own assembly. I was born a Christian. Nobody is born a Christian. When I became, when I was born, I had a Christian name. That doesn't mean being born again. You must first repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ before you can be called or counted a Christian. And these people, they were Jewish people. They were already observing Jewish feasts and all the Jewish ceremonies. But now they came out of their sin. And they came out of that dead religion. And they came to the Lord. And now 
how they continue with the, uh, the apostles doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and also in uh, prayers they were teaching them that's what jesus said and that's what they were carrying out they were teaching them uh, the word of god that's what we are to do today teaching the words of christ we're told in colossians chapter 3 colossians chapter 3 I'm reading from verse 16. Here is what we're to teach them, the words of Christ, the words of Christ. Colossians chapter 3, reading from verse 16. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. That's what we are to teach the people, the words of Christ. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, the words of Christ. Except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, he shall in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. That's the word of Christ. And except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. That's the word of Christ. And except ye be converted and become little, like little children, ye cannot see the kingdom of God. That's the word of Christ. He that heareth these things of mine and will bears them, I will liken him to a man that built his house upon the rock, and the rain comes, and the, and the winds blew and the house stood firm because it was built upon the rock that's the word of christ uh, god created the male and female and therefore shall the man leave his father and mother and be joined to his own wife and they two not three shall become one flesh that's the word of christ watch and pray that he enter into temptation that's the word of christ he says we're to teach them from conversion to water baptism, to standing firm, resisting the devil, resisting temptation, and living a righteous life. Neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Teach them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. God will help us. God will help you. That will not be having whitewashed uh, converts, but real converts that continue. In all the word of God, in Jesus' name, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with uh, grace in your hearts unto the Lord. Here is what we are to teach them, verse 17, and whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. We'll teach them how to live. We're telling them anything you do now, now that you're born again, now that you are converted, you will look at Christ. What will Christ have done? Let the word of Christ, the will of Christ, the way of Christ abide in you so that anything you do, it will be according to the word of the Lord. Look at Matthew chapter 6. Six, teaching them to observe, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. What did he command? And what are we to teach them? And what are we to keep on practicing ourselves as we teach them? Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's what we are to teach them. We are to teach them to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness first. We are to teach them to put God first in their lives, to put Christ first in their lives. Christ died for you. Christ shed his blood for you. Christ paid the greatest price for you. Now, as you live from now on, God will be number one. Christ will be number one. That's teaching them to observe all things whatsoever he has commanded us. We're looking at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. We're reading from verse 31, 32. John chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. It tells us, it says in verse 31, then said Jesus unto the Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. That's what we're to teach them. We're to teach those converts to continue in the word of Christ. If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed, and ye shall know the truth. If you don't learn, how will they know? 
And you shall know the truth. If we don't teach them the truth, how will they know? And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth of the word of God will make them free. Temptation comes, the word will make them free. Sickness comes, the word will make them free. And uh, the people of the world come, and I want to put bondage upon them again. The word of God will make them free. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Remember what Jesus said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Look at John chapter 15. John chapter 15, this is what he commanded, and this is what we are to teach them, teaching them all things, all things whatsoever Christ has commanded. Abide in me, verse 4, chapter 15, verse 4, John. Abide in me, and I in you. We must tell the people, must show them they have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. They have come to Christ, and he told us to teach them all things whatsoever he has commanded. What has he commanded? Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abides in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, and ye are the branch. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Without me ye can do nothing. We will be teaching them and instructing them that it's not enough to just come to Christ. They must also abide in Christ. Look at verse 10. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Love has saved us. We abide in love. Love sent Christ unto us. We abide in love. Love made the Father uh, to send Christ to Calvary to pay the penalty for our sin. We must abide in Christ and abide in that love. It tells us in John chapter 10. John chapter 10. And I'm reading from verse 4. John chapter 10, we're reading from verse 4 and verse 5. And when he put it forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice, and a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not a voice of strangers. You know what Jesus said? He said, when they are born again, we should teach them not to follow strangers. Who are the strangers? According to the teaching of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, that's why I said beware of the leaven of Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees. Who are the strangers? The false prophets who are coming to teach error, who are telling them that Christ is not the only way, that yes, you can follow Christ, but you also follow tradition. Those are the strangers. He has taught us that, that we do not follow strangers, we do not follow false prophets, and we're to teach the new converts that they will not follow false prophets, and they will not follow strangers. Because they cannot follow the good shepherd and the stranger at the same time. Look at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Here is what he has commanded and he has told us, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. It tells us in Matthew chapter 7 verse 15. In verse 15, beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly the ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns, of figs, of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is cut down, is hewn down, and cast into the fire. 
I pray that your converts will not be cast into the fire. And you will not be cast into the fire. But every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is cut down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruit, ye shall know them. Remember what Jesus said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. You know, some people, after they have won converts to the Lord, and the converts uh, tell them, I've been going to, you know, a particular assembly, a particular fellowship, a particular church, a particular congregation, a particular denomination. They never taught me this. They only told me that if we, you know, keep the Sabbath, then we'll get to heaven. They only told me that if we kill rams, we'll go to heaven. They only told me that if we give money to the beggar, we'll get to heaven. They only told me that if I turned over a new leaf, then I will get to heaven. Uh, should I continue to go there? Some people who say they are preachers, some people who say they are so winners, they say, well, you know, I don't want to oppose anybody. I don't even want to oppose Satan. I don't want to oppose false prophet. I don't want to oppose any Pharisee. I don't want to oppose any Sadducee. I don't want to oppose anyone that is still following after darkness. Uh, you know, you make up your mind and decide whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do will be all right. You're not teaching them the words of Christ. Christ said, beware of false prophets. Because they come to you in sheep's clothing. They're pretending. They're pretenders. They're just professors of religion. They do not possess righteousness. It says, by their fruits you will know them. Look at verse 21. In verse 21, now not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we, have we cast out devils? And in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then when I profess unto them, tell me, say it now. Go on. I never knew you. All those times they say they manifest, uh, you know, healing and miracle and prophecy and casting out devils. He said, but I never knew you. You were not a Christian. You were just uh, stealing the authority of my name. And then you had some other things uh, behind you that you were using. And although those things who said this one took place, we'll prophesy, we'll do this, we'll do that. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. The Lord Jesus said, We should tell those converts that they should not follow false prophets. If we are ashamed, if we are afraid, I don't know what the Pharisees will say about me if I say that. I don't know what the Sadducees, the Rodians will say against me if I say that. I don't know how they will criticize me if I criticize them. We're afraid of telling them what the Lord wants us to tell them. You will not be afraid. I will not be afraid. You will not be ashamed. I said you will not be ashamed. You will not be ashamed in Jesus' name. You will not favor a false prophet against the Lord Jesus, our Savior and our Redeemer. What the Lord has told us to do, that is what we will do. What the Lord has told you to do, that is what you will do. Teaching them to observe how many things? All things whatsoever I have commanded you. We're coming to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. And I'm reading from verse 35. Matthew chapter 24. We're reading from verse 35. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Amen. Amen. Heaven and earth shall pass away. Even until that happens, heaven and earth has not passed away yet. The words of Jesus has not passed away. Everything Jesus taught is still relevant to him. And that is what was still going to teach the people today. And Christ Jesus said, is coming. 
And when you call, also those who are ready will go with him. Look at verse 36. But on that day and at that hour, knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That's what Jesus taught. And he says we should go and tell them. We should go and teach the converse. Everything and all things he has commanded. He says in verse 38. For as that in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and he knew not until the flood came and took them, how many of them? All away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Look at verse 40. Then shall two be in the field, one shall be taken and the other led. You see what Jesus said? One will be taken, the other will be left. That means that not everybody will go away and with the Lord in the rapture when he comes because it says one shall be taken and one shall be left. Two women in verse 41 shall be grinding at the meal and the one shall be taken and the other left. Look at verse, 40, uh, verse 42. Watch ye therefore. That's the commandment. Watch ye therefore. And for ye know not what hour the Lord doth come. Look at verse 44. Therefore be ye also ready. You see that there are some people that say once you are born again, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter how ready you are. Everybody they say will go in the rapture. Are you not uh, coming to our church? Of course you'll go in the rapture. Are you not uh, carrying the Bible? Of course you'll go in the rapture. Jesus didn't say that. Jesus said, we need to prepare. We need to make sure that our way is right. And this is what we tell our converts, those who have come to the Lord, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Therefore, be ye also ready for a such an hour as she know not the Son of Man coming. We're coming to Luke chapter 21 Luke chapter 21 and I'm reading from verse 34 Luke chapter 21 reading from verse 34 teaching them to observe all things all things all things whatsoever I have commanded you in uh, Luke chapter 21 verse 34 it says take ye to yourselves Let's at any time your hearts be overcharged with sopiting and drunkenness. Don't, it says, don't be frivolous. Don't be carried away by anything. Don't act like a drunken man, a drunken woman. Don't be forgetful of yourself and just act anyhow and talk anyhow and behave anyhow and take heed to yourselves. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with sopiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares, for the snare shall it come upon all them that dwell on the face of the earth. What she therefore, that's a commandment, and he said, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, will teach the newcomers to be looking for the coming of the Lord, watching for the coming of the Lord, and not to do anything that would disqualify them should the Lord come at that hour they were not expecting, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, what she therefore. And pray always that she may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Look at chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 13. Chapter 19, verse 13. 
Verse 13, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And you must be obedient to yourself. If you are telling the compass to be obedient, you must be doing it too. If you are telling the compass to do it, chapter 19 of Luke, verse 13. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, what did he say unto them? I said, what did he say unto them? Okay, say it as if you are telling me. You are telling me, Pastor, don't retire, occupy till I come. You are saying, Pastor, don't give up, occupy till I come. And I'm telling you the same thing because you said we should teach them, teach you, and you teach the others what the Lord has commanded. You will not retire. You will not give up. Now, you know, somebody comes to the group pastor or comes to the state of Asia, region of Asia, nation of Asia. Uh, you know, I clocked 60 last month. And because I clocked 60 now, and you know, I need time off. Am I looking at anybody there? I need time off. I want to retire. I want to give up my responsibility another one can take it now and it doesn't matter who takes it because now i want to be free to go to the village i want to be free to relax i want to be free to do this to do it to drink to eat you will not retire you will not give up what did jesus tell us everybody does not know what did jesus tell us only my daughters, only my sisters, our mothers in the Lord. What did Jesus tell you? Oh, only my brothers, my sons, and our fathers. What did Jesus tell you? Oh, the whole church, all the workers. What had Jesus told us? Oh, the strength to continue will give you. Yeah. The courage may gone in your life in Jesus' name. Tiredness gone in Jesus' name. Weariness gone in Jesus' name. Occupy till I come. And then we pass that on to our converse, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Occupy till I come. Revelation chapter 2. In Revelation chapter 2, Revelation chapter 2, we're reading from verse 25. Revelation chapter 2, verse 25. But that which ye already have hold fast till I come. That's the, those are the words of Christ. It says the things you already have, that which you have already hold fast till I come. He that overcometh and keepeth my words unto the end of unto the end to him will I give power over the nations. You will reign with Christ. You will rule with Christ. Where is he? Where is she? The Lord confirm it in Jesus' name. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 28. And I'm reading from verse 20. Point number 3 now. Matthew chapter 28. Verse 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, everybody one, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. Say, he is with me always. Even unto the end of the world. And the church said, He will not leave you. The promise will not fail in your life. His power will not fail in your life. His pronouncement will not fail in your life. He says, and lo, I am with you always. That means always. In the day and in the night, he'll be with you. On the road, in the house, he'll be with you. In the church, in the office, he'll be with you. In the market, in the community, he will be with you. He says, I am, not I was, not I will. It's not after you have prayed and prayed and sweated, then I will come and be with you. He said, even before the prayer, I will be with you. During the prayer, he will be with you. After the prayer, he will be with you. I am with you. Always. 
even unto the end of the world. And everybody shout. Yes. Point number three now, our trust in the omnipresence of the omnipotent Christ. Our trust in the omnipresence of the omnipotent Christ. Is Christ giving the promise here, declaring the proclamation here, declaring the prophecy here? He says, I, Christ, who has all power in heaven and on earth, that means is omnipotent, is the all-powerful Christ that has all authority and he has all power and then he says i will be with you where i am he will be with me where you are he will be with you where all the other believers are he will be with them that's what we call omnipresence present everywhere in your sorrow he'll be with you in your sickness he'll be with you in your need he'll be with you at the time when there is no helper, when there is no supporter, he will be with you. He will never, he will not let you down. He says, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. On the battlefield, he will be with you. Before Goliath, he will be with you. When those, when the flood comes, the enemy comes like a flood, his mighty power will be with you in Jesus' name. Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 5. Now, all these promises, remember, these are the various areas of the promises of Christ. You will claim them. As I read, you'll say, that is mine. I said as I read, you'll say that is mine. It will be yours in Jesus' name. The omnipotent Christ cannot fail. The all-powerful Christ cannot fail. The one that has all authority cannot fail. It will be what you. Just shut up to one, verse five. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. Yeah. I will not fail you, yeah. nor forsake you. Yeah. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto these people shalt thou divide the land for an inheritance. And then it says, Which I give, which I have given unto them and then he tells us only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which moses my servant commanded thee turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest who is going to prosper everywhere he goes? Be it confirmed in Jesus' name. This book of the Lord shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have I not commanded thee, be strong, and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Amen. Somebody said an amen. amen. Isaiah chapter 41. Isaiah chapter 41. I'm reading from verse 10. Here is the promise of the Lord for you. Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Past tense or present tense? Present tense and continuous tense. I am with thee. 
be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that are incensed, furious, angry against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive, battle, and they that have conflict with you, and they that fight with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee shall be as nothing. And as a sin of naught. For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help you. Amen. I will help you in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 1. Remember what Jesus said? He says, And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. As he fulfilled it for Joshua, he'll fulfill it for you. As he fulfilled it for Israel, he'll fulfill it for you. As he fulfilled it for Jeremiah, he'll fulfill it for you. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 8. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 8. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee. Are you there? As you get back home, somebody said, I've been waiting for you. And he's frowning. Then you smile. Why do you smile? Because you know his frown can do nothing to you. Because you know his threats can do nothing to you. Don't tell him, don't tell him that just have that as a secret from heaven in your heart. And then he says, I will do this. And he begins to brag. And then you just keep quiet. And then after he has finished all his you know, ammunition, thrown out everything. And he has nothing to throw out anymore. You smile and say, God bless you. And then you turn away. And he's there, he's frozen. He's surprised. How is he just like that? And he's not even replying me. Because you have the omnipotent Christ abiding with you. Nothing will hurt you. As they try to make you weaker, you'll be stronger and stronger in Jesus' name. But say it, be not afraid of their faces. Then he says, for I, but he says, for I am present tense continuous tense all the time with you i am with thee to deliver thee says the lord look at uh, verse 12 in verse 12 it says then said the lord unto me i mean unto me i mean the lord is talking to me today he said unto me thou as well seen for I will hasten my word to perform it. In your life, the Lord will hasten his word. In your family, the Lord will hasten his word. He'll perform his word in your life in Jesus' name. Verse 19, they shall fight against thee, but they shall not prevail against thee. For I am with thee, says the Lord to deliver thee. I am delivered. I said I am delivered. I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. No man, no woman of darkness shall by any means hurt you. No enemy shall by any means hurt you. Your life is safe and secured in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 18. Acts chapter 18. And I'm reading from verse 9. Then speak the Lord to Paul in the night by vision. Be not afraid, but speak. 
and hold not thy peace, but stand, for I am with thee. And no man, however powerful, no man, even if the man is a magician, no man, even an occultic man, no man, a powerful man in the world, no man shall search on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. I have much people in this city. Now as I see you, I see that your life is secured. Your life is protected. The promise of the omnipotent Christ will always be fulfilled because he will never leave you alone. Acts chapter 27 verse 25. Acts 27 verse 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Wherefore, brothers and sisters, be of good cheer. Say, I believe God. It shall be even as it was told me. Say it with confidence, I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Say it for the final time. It will be so. Sickness will vanish away. Oppression will vanish away. Loneliness will be banished away. Will banish away. Fear will vanish away. All the powers of the enemies before you will crumble. And lo, I am with you. How often? I said how often? Always, day or night, everywhere, anywhere, the omnipotent Christ is with you. The divine healer is with you. The divine deliverer is with you. The upholder is with you. The one who will not allow you to fall will be with you. I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Say an amen for yourself. It is done. I said it is done. Rise up and rejoice in what the Lord has told you today. He has given us the great commission. And he has told you, go on into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He's giving us transformation. He's giving us obedience. He's giving us the teaching that we tell everybody to observe. And then the omnipotent Christ is the omnipresent one. He will never leave you. He will be with you forever. Pray, open your mouth. The Lord will be with you in a mighty way from today.